Alrighty, what is going on guys? Welcome back for another video. In this video, we're going to explore uh, how to build uh, more flexible training loops. Uh, so far, we've been using model.fit and uh, if you can use model.fit, that's great. But sometimes you need more flexibility. So in this video, we will look at customizing model.fit. And then in the next video, uh, how we will look at how to build custom training loops from scratch. All right, so first of all, here are just some basic imports. Those are, you've all seen those uh, before. And then we're just gonna load the, uh, the MNIST data set. So we're not gonna do anything complicated. I'm just gonna show you the general structure and then that can be applied to many different problems. All right, so we're gonna X train, Y train, uh, X test, Y test, and we're just gonna MNIST load data. Then we're going to do X train is uh, X train dot reshape. Then we're just going to have, I guess, a minus one for all the examples uh, and then 28, 28, one. And uh, we're doing reshape here just to add this uh, channel right here. And then as type converted to flow 32 and then normalize with dividing by 255. So let's, see, let's copy this and let's go new line and do X test test and then let's create our model first of all so let's do model is equal to keras dot sequential then we're going to do uh, layers dot input and then the shape of the input is 282821 uh, layers com 2d 64 3 kernel size and then padding same so i'm just going through this quickly this is not really the uh, most important part of the video So now that we have a model, we're going to create a class and we're going to call it custom fit. And we're going to inherit from keras.model. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an init function. And uh, all we're going to send in here is the model. So we're going to first call super uh, to inherit from keras.model. So we're going to do self and then init. And then we're going to do self.model equal to model. Then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to define one training step and that's going to be used in a model dot fit. Right. So our goal is basically we want to do something like uh, training is a custom uh, custom wait custom. What the hell? Custom fit uh, of that model. We're going to send in that model. Then we're going to do training dot fit and we're going to send in X train Y train and then batch size and then number of epochs sort of as normal. Although this dot fit is going to be done in a custom way. We're going to sort of define how we want that to be done. So, um, I mean, there are many use cases of this where you want, where you need to do custom training loops um, and sort of you, you, you use model dot fit when you can. And when you can't, you try to customize your model dot fit which is what we're doing in this video. And then for that uh, most flexibility, you do the training loops from scratch. Uh, but an example of when you actually need to do this is uh, generative adversarial networks. I'm not assuming you're familiar with that. I'm just sort of saying there are many examples where uh, this is useful. All right, so let's then do a uh, train step. Uh, we're gonna send in uh, data. And then we're gonna, that's gonna be a tuple of X and Y. So we're just gonna do X and Y is equal to data. Then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do with TF gradient tape as tape. And uh, why we're doing this is uh, because now we're going to do the forward propagation and then the loss function. And when we're doing it under that tape, it's going to record all of the operations that was done. And then that will then be useful for uh, calculating the gradients for back propagation. So basically, we're going to do y prediction is uh, self.model. We're going to send in x. We're going to specify training is true. And then for this loss function, we're going to do loss equals self.compiled loss. And then we're going to send in y and then y prediction. And uh, this is going to be done in the uh, compile. So right here, we're going to do training.compile. We're going to send in 
And here we're going to send in optimizer is Kara's optimizers Adam. Then we're going to send in loss is uh, Kara's losses sparse uh, categorical cross entropy and from logit equals true. Uh, then also we're going to do metrics is uh, accuracy. And uh, so this is for the first one where we're uh, doing the compile. I'm also going to show you how to do a custom compile. Um, but, but let's let's take that as we go. So we, we're going to first now continue doing the train step when we have this compile. And so this self.compiled loss is using uh, this sparse categorical cross entropy from the training.compile. After that, we are basically want to get the gradients, right? We've now done the forward propagation. This part is a forward propagation, which we're doing with this uh, gradient under this tape to record all of the operations. Then uh, we're going to do training variables is our self dot trainable variables. And uh, th these are all stored from from this uh, parent class, this uh, uh, Keras dot model. So we don't have to bother with that. Then we want to get the gradients. We're going to do tape dot gradient and we're going to do a uh, loss and then training variables, right? So we're getting the gradient uh, of the loss with respect to the, the training variables, which is ultimately what we want to change. Then uh, we're going to do a step, an optimizer step, a gradient descent step, and we're going to do self.optimizer.apply gradients. And then here we're going to do zip uh, gradients and then training variables. And then we're going to do self.compiled metrics.update state y and then y prediction and this is this is going to be for the accuracy and then in the end we're going to return um, m.name uh, and you'll see what it means so m.name m.result for uh, m in self.metrics all right so we're we're getting the m.name which is going to be the loss for example and then we're getting the result which is the current loss and then we're doing that for all of the metrics and that's going to be um, the loss and the accuracy in this case. And uh, yeah, so I think that's it for just this first step. And I think we should now be able to run this. And as you can see here, it uh, does seem to work. And uh, yeah, so basically, so basically the next step now is that we want to do our own uh, compile. So what we're going to do right here is we're going to define compile we're going to send in the optimizer and we're going to send in the loss and we're going to do super uh, custom fit self dot compile um, so yeah and then we're going to do self dot optimizer is equal to optimizer self dot loss is equal to loss and all we have to do then is uh, we have basically the same thing right uh, training.compile except we're not going to send in a metric right here so we're just going to use the optimizer and the loss and uh, and that should also basically be it now we just have to change this right here to this compiled loss we're just going to do self.loss it's a uh, which we've stored right here so self.loss and then let's see yeah and then we can still use self.optimizer and let's just rerun it and now, as you can see, we're not getting an accuracy. So we're going to have to uh, keep track of a, that metric by ourselves. So what we can do is, um, for example, we could uh, create it right here. We could do accuracy metric is uh, keras.metrics.sparse categorical accuracy. And let's just call it name, uh, let's see, name equals accuracy. And then in the, and then right here, instead of the compiled metric, what we're going to do is, uh, is accuracy metric dot update state. We're going to send in Y and then Y prediction. And then we can remove this compiled metric. Um, and yeah, so that should hopefully be it. Let's see if we can run this. All right. So now since we're keeping track of the accuracy by ourselves, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to, uh, write it explicitly so we're gonna do loss is uh, in this case just loss and then we're gonna do accuracy is um, 
accuracy metric dot result and hopefully now we should get the loss and uh, the accuracy yeah so this looks pretty familiar to what we did previously except now we're doing the compile completely by ourselves and then all right so now we got the compile we got a train step what we normally do as well is in the end after training we're doing training dot evaluate and then x test y test and then we're specifying batch size let's say 32. Uh, one thing here is that uh, this dot fit works on the train step and then evaluate works on a test step so to make this work we actually need to define another function and we need to do test step although this one is going to be a little bit easier since um, well first of all we're going to unpack the data and then we're going to compute uh, prediction so we're going to do y prediction is self.model x and then we're specifying the training is false and what we're doing is this is if we're using batch norm or dropout that has different behaviors during testing and training we're uh, just telling the model this is now in testing so make sure that those modules that have different behaviors are set to test mode or evaluation mode then we're uh, going to compute the loss which is self.loss of y Y prediction and then we're going to do accuracy metric dot update state y y prediction and uh, in the end we're going to return a dictionary of loss which is just going to be loss and then accuracy uh, we're doing ac accuracy metric dot result all right so this is a very like it's very similar to the training step although it's much more simplified and it's simplified because we're not doing a gradient descent update so we don't need to keep track of of uh, this tape of making sure that we have all the gradients and and all of that stuff and yeah so let's run this for yeah two epochs and then let's do the evaluation all right so after this we see that we get 93 after the first epoch 97 and then almost 98 on the uh, test set but yeah so i mean what we want to establish here is that this uh, does seem to train and it's working. So, so yeah, that's how you create your own, um, you know, specifying the training step and a test step, which overwrites how the training.fit and then training.evaluate is done. So in this way, you can build more complicated and complex models uh, in, the, in the training steps. Uh, but still have the flexibility of doing training.fit um, and that means that you can still use the training.compile although in this last one we we overwrote the um, the compile but but you get the point in you can still use the their compile and the metrics and all of that stuff but yeah if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below thank you so much for watching the video and i hope to see you in the next one